I live in a deeply divided household. My wife, Brenna, loves Hallmark Christmas movies, <laughs> while I happen to think they're sappy and predictable. She loves the warm and cozy vibes they give off. I find them fake and silly. She loves the happy endings. I tire of the saccharine sentimentality. One of our running jokes is whenever I walk in and see her lounging on the sofa after work, accompanied by the dogs and a big warm mug of tea, watching yet another formulaic Christmas movie, I announce, you know, they're going to end up together. <laughs> and she yells at me to stop ruining it. <laughs> but that's the whole premise of the Hallmark Christmas Industrial Complex. Two seemingly very different, but always equally attractive people meet unexpectedly in a town called Mistletoe or Christmas Creek or whatever. <laughs> they couldn't possibly end up together because A, she's already dating another attractive man who just happens to have no redeeming qualities, and B, she runs a small bakery <laughs> that specializes in Christmas cookies, and her business is being threatened by a soulless corporate entity that her boyfriend, unbeknownst to her, is doing business with. Now the good news, the good news is that this cute-as-a-button baker inevitably has a similarly good-looking and single male best friend. Stay with me. Despite the obvious chemistry, which is constantly pointed out to her by her also very attractive best friend, she just doesn't see it. He's just a friend, she keeps saying, until with two minutes left in the movie, they kiss with snow gently falling on the steps of the village green and presumably live happily ever after. The happy ending was never in doubt, of course. And just as we gather to celebrate our Lord's birth on this magical evening in Palm Beach, we all know the ending to the Christmas story. Every year there is no room at the inn. Every year Mary and Joseph are ushered into a stable. Every year Mary gives birth and the babe is wrapped in swaddling clothes. Every year shepherds quake, Angels sing on high, and wise men follow the star. We come to church knowing exactly how this story will turn out. But the nativity story is more than just predictable escapism with a happy ending. Because Jesus enters a world that is not the stylized version of a movie set. He enters a world that is broken and in need of healing. He enters a world where people yearn for hope and meaning. He enters a world that cries out for justice and dignity for every human being. Jesus enters our world, not a contrived world of shiny, happy people. A stark reminder of this is that the whole area that Christians throughout the world are focused on on this night is at war. Sure, we could just ignore this fact, tune it out, and crank up another verse of joy to the world, but the Holy Land is hurting. It is rife with violence and terror, fear and death. And so even amid the celebration of our Lord's birth, we pause to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, for that little town of Bethlehem, for those in Gaza, for Jews, Muslims, and Christians throughout the region. There is a hole in our collective heart tonight, and we can't help but acknowledge this. 
and yet it is into the very reality of the human condition that we welcome Jesus. And that's the great miracle, that love came down at Christmas, that into this broken and sinful world, into the mud and muck of the stable, God sent his only begotten Son. That God loves his creation so much that God sent his own flesh and blood to live and die among us, to show us a better way, to be the light upon our path, to remind us that, God's, that God loves us not just in the abstract or in theory, but God loves you. Whoever you are, wherever you live, whatever you believe, whatever you have done or left undone, God knows you to the very core of your being, and God loves you. Maybe you're here tonight because you needed that reminder. Maybe you're here tonight because in your search for hope and meaning you've realized the exterior trappings of life are ultimately unfulfilling. Maybe you're here tonight to renew your relationship with Jesus Christ. But something drew you to this place on this night. Like the wise men following the star, you were drawn to the manger to encounter the Christ child. And that is a remarkable thing, a beautiful thing, a holy thing. And whether you're sitting in a pew tonight or joining us online from the comfort of your home, I am delighted that you are here in body or in spirit. Because in a world that feels torn apart, our faith says that there is a way. In a country that feels hopelessly divided, our faith says that there is a way. Jesus is the way and the life and the truth. And it all begins in Bethlehem. Soon enough, the decorations will come down. The live trees will be hauled out to the street. The fake ones folded up. The Hallmark movies will, thanks be to God, go on hiatus. but I encourage you to hold on to the Christmas spirit throughout the coming year. Not the artificial or manufactured joy that gets mass produced, but the deep abiding joy that comes through the knowledge that you are God's beloved child. That's what I want you to hold on to. And so may you experience and embrace the joy and wonder of this night. May you receive the Christ child with open arms and open hearts, and may you all have a very Merry Christmas. Amen.